Okay, so by the end of the fourth week, we have a neural tube. And that neural tube is not simply uh, an unlandscaped uh, tube, but it has swellings where the brain is going to be. This is where the spinal cord is going to be, and this is where the brain is going to be. And we're going to talk a lot more about those swellings. They're called vesicles. But for right now, what we want to do is um, focus on the three different types of developmental cells that are present in the neuroectoderm. One is the neural tube, and that's going to become the central nervous system. But the next one is a uh, neural crest, which surrounds the neural tube for almost its entire length, but not quite all the way to the front. The neural crest is going to give rise to the enteric nervous system, the sensory neurons, and the autonomic ganglion neurons. So these are the, the three elements of the peripheral nervous system. All are going to come from neural crest. There's one other source of peripheral sensory neurons, and that is coming from the placodes. The placodes surround the front of the uh, neural tube on the outside, either directly or on the outside of the crest. And these placodes develop into sensory neurons that reside inside the cranium. For each one of these developmental origins, tube, crest, and placode, there are non-neuronal derivatives as well as neuronal derivatives. And so what we're going to do is, is just get, go through a hint of the non-neuronal derivatives and, and also see how each of these lines up with um, the CNS and the, and the PNS. Okay, so the tube is going to form the brain, the spinal cord, and the retina. It also has non-neural derivatives, the choroid epithelium that produces the choroid plex that uh, forms part of the choroid plexus that produces cerebral spinal fluid, or CSF, and the pineal gland, all tube origin. The placodes give rise to sensory neurons of of, of several cranial nerves. Um, it also gives rise to the lens and to the anterior pituitary. These are non-neural uh, types of cells. And in one of the most spectacular um, stories that we're going to look at a little bit when we talk about cranial nerves, these, the placard also gives rise to um, a group of cells that lives in the hypothalamus. And these cells are going to migrate across the olfactory uh, nerves to get into the, into the central nervous system. And these are the only cells in the central nervous system that, uh, uh, that don't come from the neural tube origin. I left the crest for last. It does not give rise to any cell types that are going to populate the central nervous system. It does give rise to the uh, almost the entirety, with a few exceptions, of the peripheral nervous system. But the really spectacular thing about the neural crest is it also gives rise to a lot of non-neural tissues, a lot. So well, I'll just name a few of them. The melanocytes that are in the skin, um, the arachnoid, the pia, the middle ear ossicles, the hair cells of the, of the um, inner ear that allow us to detect uh, both head position and motion and also uh, auditory sounds. Um, the, uh, it, it, another really, really important um, descendant from the crest is the organizing um, uh, cells that organize the uh, cartilage, muscle, and bone of the face. So if there is a crest mutation, and there often is, this is not an unusual mis uh, mutation, what you will get is a mixture of effects on the peripheral nervous system and on these, this odd collection of non-neural um, targets. And one of these uh, uh, syndromes is Wardenberg syndrome. And we're going to just look at that because it's really, it really um, exemplifies w what's particular about the crest. So in these individuals, they have um, a, a particular facial appearance. I don't know if you can see that, widely spaced eyes, and there are some other pieces of their appearance that are 
are um, uh, consistent. Um, and this comes from the effect of crest on facial development. They have um, odd pigmentation, oftentimes a shock of white hair, blue eyes. They often go deaf because they don't have the inner, uh, the hair cells for the, uh, in the cochlea. And they might have also um, enteric nervous system problems. So they're going to have digestive problems because they don't have or they have a, um, a, a less, uh, fewer neurons in the enteric nervous system. So what the Wardenberg syndrome shows you is that here's this collection of weird symptoms. Who, who would put together deafness with digestive problems and, and a shock of white hair? You just wouldn't do that. But they make sense because all of them come from this common developmental origin. And that is the way that um, these developmental uh, mutations or, or these developmental conditions um, do make sense. They make sense in that they affect a certain lineage or a certain process in the developmental process. And Wardenberg's is, is, uh, exemplifies that. Okay, so now what we're going to go on, we're going to leave the periphery, we're going to leave the crest and the placodes, and we're going to go and uh, spend the rest of, of our time in uh, the tube. <laughs>